All right, guys, welcome to episode 58 of Dope Talk TV. It's yours truly, Low Key. Got John here with me, got Matt here with me, got what's Kevin's up, up? running around somewhere. Yo, yo. We're back with another one, man. We appreciate everybody that's rocking, sharing, liking, <laughs> subscribing, yes. all that good shit, man. Keep doing so. We will have some merchandise out soon. And while Johnny Boy picks up the fucking uh, the the light, light here, the light. you know what I'm saying? We'll get right into the 58th episode. How you feeling today, man? Good, bro. How you doing? Doing good, man. Thank doing you. Thank you all for having me on. Yeah, yeah of course. We, you know, we got to dialogue a little bit before we started recording, and I like your vibe, bro. You know, you seem like you're you're about your shit, you're about your hustle, and um, I salute for that, man. For real, for real. So, oh yeah, glad to have you on the show for sure. Yeah, known known you for a while too, man. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook brought us back together. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. I remember yeah. adding Shout you. Out Facebook, yeah. man. Yeah, thank you, real. Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we worked together in 2013 at a cigar shop. So yep. And and now we're here. Right. So. Yeah. It's crazy how right, that brought us full, together. It yeah. comes full circle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. That's crazy. Yeah, um, man. Something that I wanted to ask you about is um is real estate for sure, man. I know you Well, you I don't do know that. much about real estate because I've had a real estate license since two thousand and fourteen. Okay. But I worked in timeshare sales for mm. a little over five years. Okay, so let's so talk about that. I've yeah. only been in residential real estate for a couple weeks now. Right. So um and I've been shadowing my good friend Ferris, who's uh, killing it in real estate. Shout out so, to Ferris. Yeah, yeah, Ferris is the man, you know. Best yeah, mentor ever. Shout out. <laughs> That's what's That's up, cool, bro. That's cool, though. So you were doing timeshare for a little bit? I know you did timeshare for a little bit. Yeah, too. I used to work for yeah, uh, Blue Green. My dog looked like he was selling fucking yachts and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I actually had fun doing it. It was cool. It was a good experience. Yeah, absolutely. I learned a lot. Um, it was interesting. I was really shy at first. I was sweaty too, man. Yeah. I was sweating like a motherfucker in <laughs> those suits. And- yeah, no, the sweat don't stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was doing an open house yesterday, and my entire undershirt was completely soaking wet. I was like, let's get back to the gym. Like, oh, my God. No, for real. Yeah, I guess that's why I always got backup shirts in the car. Yes. You have to, bro. Because, like, walking around with a wet shirt is just not comfortable. Yeah, it's not the move. People smell it, too. That's definitely not the move. But, yeah, so timeshare. How exactly is it that timeshare works, bro, for dummies like me that have never heard, like, never done it? Well, how it works, basically, is is you spend money to vacation. But with the job of selling timeshare, what it really is about is... Learning how to take rejections, consistent rejections to the face, because you got to hear no, no, no all the time. So the biggest value that I got out of that job was we got that whistle again. <laughs> What's going on? Is that you? That's, I don't know what it is. Oh, what? What's going on? <laughs> this never happens. What is going on here? Hello? It's, it's this table. I don't know what it is. Hold on. Let me try. Excuse us, guys, while we try to fucking fix this. Jesus. <laughs> they don't like they don't like us, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk about sales. Fact. Talk yeah. about sales. You yeah. Know? But uh, the last note on vacationing, though, I do think vacationing is important, you know, because I think there's a difference between, you know, being successful and being fulfilled, you know, because mm. someone could be really successful on paper, but if they're not happy on the inside, you know, and I think if you look in the future and you try to prevent certain things from happening, you know, you can't predict what's going to happen. You can't prevent things from happening, but you definitely can prevent things like regret. Right. You know, do the yeah. things you want to do now while you have the means. Right. You know? And vacation can even be just spending the day with your family, going to the park. So, you mm-hmm. know, so I think that's one big takeaway that I got was seeing that all these families taking vacations on the job. And, you know, I didn't travel at all when my kids were really little. So I was right. like, hey, they could do it. Why can't I do it? You know, and yeah. you know, when you when you travel with the people that you love, you're capturing a moment, you're capturing a memory. So that's the mm-hmm. real value that people get out of spending money on vacation because they're buying something that's priceless. Mm. But the product's definitely not for everybody. I'm not selling that anymore. I got out of that that business thanks to Corona. So shout <laughs> yeah. out to Corona. Yeah, shout yeah, out, corona, shout out to corona, corona, man. You fucked half of the country Fucking, right in the arse. Yeah, but, yeah. But it was good. You know, sometimes we're meant to have experiences in life because we're meant to become better. We're meant to become stronger. Right. You know, no one ever gets stronger when it's easy. You know, sometimes right. that adversity adversity is what sculpts people to become a better person. Yeah, yeah. A smarter person. I feel like most of the time that's the case, man. You got to have gone through something, bro. Like, I mean, there are people out there that are blessed enough to, you know, like not have to go through a lot to get to where they are. But I feel like most people that are successful, they definitely go through hell and back to get there. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. And I think a lot of them that are successful in whatever field, I think they do something that the average person is not willing to do. Yeah, it's just discipline over regret, man. I heard I heard uh one of the speakers I listened to a lot, I think it was Jim Rohn, he said that and um 
like it really hit me. It was like, damn, that's really your two options. It's like it's either discipline or regret. You either discipline yourself now or you regret it later. Like, yeah. And, yeah, at the end of your life, you're either going to be an example or a warning. Right. That's some more Jim Jim Rohn too. I love Jim Rohn. Yeah, Jim Rohn is a shout out to movies. Audible, the ultimate Jim Rohn collection. I read that shit like three times. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> damn. And I like uh, incorporating some of the things that he talks about and some of his wisdom that he that he shares with people in his books, even with uh, with my kids. You know, it's so he, was, he was using an example of like kids coming up saying like, hey, like daddy, mommy, can I have five dollars? No. You right. want to have your kids come up and say, mommy, daddy, how, how can I, I earn five dollars? Earn five dollars. How yeah. can I make five dollars? Yeah, exactly. So they right. get in the, the correct mindset. Very you know, yeah. smart. Wow. And learn how to work for it. Yeah. You know, and that's important, it. man. That's, that's important. Cool. Especially if you if you already acquired your wealth, you know, and you're raising kids that like are coming up under that type of like system like it, it's important to let them like like teach them the, the value of a dollar that's always important right? it doesn't matter whether you're poor or super rich like yeah like valuing that is one of the most important things because if you value you know if you know how to value your money and you're you're able to learn that and teach that to your children now you create generational wealth you know and that should be the the goal for most people yeah and wealth could be something that's not monetary either right you know like uh I remember in Jim Rohn, since we're on that topic, I love Jim Rohn. Glad you brought him up. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. He was, a, he was the mentor of Tony Robbins, too. Not right. a lot of people know that, but he was Tony Robbins' mentor. But, um, yeah, with uh, generational wealth, wealth could be something that's non-materialistic, too. So being able to leave your kids a library of badass books, mm-hmm. being able to leave your kids a journal that you had of, like, your lessons, you know, being able to leave your uh, kids, you know, let's say you have a vlogs of your experience, you know, some way of documenting it. I think that's something that's super valuable. Oh, that's more valuable than money, man. Because yeah, yeah. once you, you know, like once your parents are gone and stuff like that and all you have is those videos and that like, you know, those vlogs, it's like you're, that's going to mean more to you. Yeah. Than and those books and those lessons and, and all that. Right. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like right. how can we make the people that we love and the people that are younger than us, like younger brothers, younger sisters, uh, our kids, our grandkids, how can we make them stand on the shoulders of giants? You know, mm. by not repeating the same mistakes that we made, and, and sometimes they will. But hey, at least you can do your best. That was good. Right. Yeah. That was nice. That was, that was bars. That was yeah. bars right there. <laughs> that was bars. Yeah. That was bars. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm a, I'm a SoundCloud rapper, by the way. Oh wow. Hey man, I am. I'm actually kind of. Yeah, let's get this shit popping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually am. I got a couple songs. You know. No, you I'm haven't. Just... You, no. Once you get a face tattoo, then. Oh, oh yeah. Then, then I'm a. Shit. Then I'm a SoundCloud. Yeah. You gotta get a teardrop or something. Oh, I'm gonna do bro. something. something Spider yeah. web on my head. Yeah, something. Dope, dope talk. Yeah. <laughs> dope talk right here. Fuck. DT. DT right here. Go home. Yeah, <laughs> but but for real, I do have some shit that I had made on SoundCloud back in 2016. Yeah, wow. Yeah, but it's not really like I I produced it like a real producer. It was more like I went into uh, Logic Pro X and mm. got a bunch of samples and just mixed and matched. You know, made sure that the was in harmony. You know, make sure that the beats were in the same key and just kind of like just played with it. But I got like 10 tracks on there that I made. That's fuck yeah! Like, huh? It's like EDM, some dubstep, some hip hop beats. But Hell yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So I like music. I love it. You know, I think music is really magical. You know, magical. Bro, I think that it music is, is like yeah. music is universal. You know, yeah. like it doesn't matter if, if it, good music could translate all around the world, and that's why music is so is such a like you can make so much money off of it. You know, it's such a lucrative thing because like if you make a song about being sad, how many people around the world can't relate to it? You know, yeah, everybody. You know, or even it, you don't even have to say anything. Just making a nice like beat you know if you make a nice soundtrack like that alone could you know impact the world so yeah music is definitely magical bro we music need is magical 100 percent. you know and think about it like you could be tired and shit and you put on something that like really hits hard and you're in the gym like all of a sudden you're awake again yeah you know it's I mean? powerful it's and like you know when you think about it, you ever see those videos where people put like sounds and vibrations to water and then the water like yes. makes a certain like mm-hmm. shape in it yes you know think about that with your own body because yeah, your body 70%. is 70 percent water yeah. right your body is 70 percent water you know and you know we're made of scientifically you would say we're made of molecules at mm-hmm. the core you know and at the core it's molecules and vibration things like that so when you listen to music and you start to imagine and visualize those things like enhancing you in some way I think that's how it really becomes magical. It takes someone that's tired to make them feel awake. It can make someone feel like like hopeless to feeling like full of hope. 
So oh, I think mm-hmm. music is is phenomenal in that way. You know? Yeah, no, so for shout sure. out to all the musicians yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, especially yeah, people getting your shit for free. You know, fuck yeah, I love reggae too, man. Yeah. Reggae's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. All, all genres can you know can can hit well. You know yes. what I mean, in the right place, the right time. But right. we all have our preference. What like we prefer on the regular. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah, for yeah. sure, for but, sure. I can listen to anything really, but yeah, yeah, you're right. I prefer to listen to like. You know, like Spanish music and yeah, like reggaeton, and stuff like you know, yeah, Bad Bunny. Yeah, yeah, Bad Bunny, baby. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I got mad friends that are from PR, so like, yeah. yeah. So I don't listen to Bad Bunny, but like when I'm in their car, I, I listen to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. That was crazy. Shout out to my boy Ian and Jorge. Yeah, yeah. Jorge. Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah. Shout out to y'all. Shout out, nah, man. This year has been one of those years where I feel like it's a make it or break it type of year for a lot of people and like you said you know the corona impacted your job and now you're looking you know to start something new on a fresh you know fresh page and i feel like this is this is the time to do it and it's if you don't take advantage of this time man it's i feel like yeah. you regret it later. i think it's it's not difficult but it's not impossible you oh, know for sure i just got done reading a book called uh, relentless have you guys ever heard of it mm. no by tim glover I highly recommend it. This guy, Tim Glover, was the personal enhancement coach for, like, top stars in the NBA, like uh, Michael Jordan, for example. He was Michael Jordan's coach. Wow. And when you're the best of the best, how can you become better? Right. You know what I mean? So he would, that, that's kind of like his provocation, was trying to take someone that's the best of the best and even make them even better. Mm. But the big takeaway from the book was he combined all the techniques and tactics and, and stories from, um, from that and put it into to his book. And about the reason why it's called Relentless it's a psychology. It's a way of living, being relentless. You know, it's like if, if you're good, don't stop until you're great. Right. Yeah. Now, if you're great, don't stop until you're unstoppable. So right. it's a never-ending pursuit to become better and better and better. And I think it is important to have the, er- the element of fulfillment as one of the goals, too. Like having emotional goals, having fulfillment goals. You mm-hmm. know, because obviously having all the money and, and recognition and success in the world, whatever that means for you, means nothing if you're miserable. It means nothing if you're not happy. So that's important to incorporate, but it is important to have that relentless attitude, you know? Yeah. And in the book, they even make a point of saying like, if you're relentless, you're not a closer. You're better than that. You're a cleaner. You're the one that everyone relies on. You're the one that shows up. You're the one that gets it done. You're the one that's going to find a way or make a way. And that's a huge difference in psychology versus a winner and a quitter. Right. And also you see a lot of, a, a, a lot of people out there in the ether of our society where they get some type of social recognition or likes on social media for being a victim. Mm. Now, yeah. I don't want to like make That's anyone so... feel bad for being a victim. Yeah, I know people go through, be people take advantage of that. that I don't, shit, come thank on, you. It, it I know, goes too far. Yeah. I know people have been victims of stuff and I, and I do feel for that. I feel for them, but it's like, do you want to wallow in that forever? So it's like a mentality of being a victim versus a victor. Right. And pe- it's not just that, man. We act like, like people don't have the choice to just like hop off social media. You yeah, know, like the, the cyber bully thing to me, it's like, come on, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. But I, what I grew up was uh, sticks and stones break your bones, but names can never hurt you. Yes, that's what I grew up on. Exactly. So it's like rather than nerfing the world, how can we make each other stronger? Right. You know, how can how can we make it so people can hear an insult to the face and be like, wow, that's interesting. Why would they think like that way? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm not going to affect my day. I'm not going right. to let it ruin my day. I'm not going to be offended by it. So to to, to a point, it is a it is a choice how they want to react. to to, to, to react so yeah but when you're mentioning 2020 you mentioned problems the reason why i brought up that book relentless is because a relentless person doesn't look at problems as problems they just look at it as situations to that, address right and that's two different mentalities and those two different mentalities are going to result in two different actions you know and i really think life in some ways you know to an extent there is fate there is destiny you know i have a tattoo on more fati which is stoic <laughs> philosophy for a love of one's fate Right. So I do believe in that, but yeah. just like your Timberland thing in the back, you see all those branches. <laughs> yes. And you look at rivers and streams, there's branches that break off, and those times when things break off, those are our decisions. Mm-hmm. Those are how we respond to certain actions. So I really do believe that people can make a, a better situation out of what they're in. You know, it might not be exactly what they imagine, but it can definitely be better than, than where they're at, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like a choice between fear and love. Right. Yeah, choices are important, man. Choices are everything in life. Wow. Like one choice, one choice could change your whole life. Yeah. You know, for better or for worse. Yeah. You know, like somebody choosing to buy a lottery ticket and winning is an example and somebody murdering somebody and going to prison for the rest of their life. Those are both examples yeah. of how you could change your life negatively or positively yeah. in one moment. So Just like that. 
Yeah, that's that. You're right, man. Like, it's all about choices and and picking the right choices for you. You know, because everybody's not in the same shoes. Everybody doesn't yeah. have the same obstacles. But ultimately, man, it, there's no excuse for not living up to your fullest potential. You know, like yeah. you have you. I feel like that's one of your obligations as a human being is to express yourself and put out what you have into the world and teach other people how to do the same for themselves you know so yeah man I, yeah and to go back to jim Rohn, talking about like value there is a difference between being valuable in the marketplace and being valuable in a different way so right. what's valuable in a different way you know in value in the marketplace is you being able to provide products services to people that benefit them in a certain way so your service or your product gives them value in exchange for money so that's more of like a science in a way right but, and if you don't provide a lot of value to the marketplace, it doesn't mean you're not a valuable brother. It doesn't mean you're not a valuable, you know, husband or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there is a, a distinct difference between those two. Right. You know, and a lot of people separate that. And, and I think a lot of people get tied up, especially in social media, of comparing themselves to others. And I really don't think that your net worth, you know, is a... Uh, is, um, should be associated with your self-worth. You know, I don't think your self-worth <laughs> should be associated with your net worth. Right. However... Your net worth, in a way, it is like a score to the marketplace. Right. So it's a good way to look at it and see see where you're doing, and, and sometimes through creativity, figure out ways to become better. You know, mm. and, and I think having that relentless psychology and relentless mindset will help you tap into those creative sides of yourself to be able to figure out how I can provide more value. You know, when uh, for example, when we worked at the cigar shop. Yeah. We were on an hourly wage. You know, yeah. They would give us those bonuses and everything like that. We had like but, tips, you know, the little tip jar. I don't know if they're going to be mad at me for this, but like when they would throw away cigar boxes, I would sell them on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. And I made money. Hey, yes. Man. One month I made 300 bucks. Yeah. People use them for arts and crafts. Now, of course, I would ask, like, I'm not going to. Well, they put it in the, in the damage box. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. we'll drop it. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? And, and, by the way, yeah. Yeah. Empty, Sorry, guys. <laughs> empty cigar boxes. Yeah, empty. Empty, empty. empty cigar boxes. So yeah. rather than just throwing it out, you know, you know, figuring out a way how to make some extra money. Because, you know, at the time, for me, I, I wasn't able to settle with that with, with that hourly wage. Yeah, you know? seriously, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, and that's something bad. that, you, you know, when you first start working, you realize real quick, like, you know, you you can't make money stretch the way you'd like to. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. You can't depend why, on someone else either. Yeah, and that's why it's you know? important to create different streams of income because it's like, it's cool to have nine to five, man. Like, there's guys out here that have tons of money and they still have work at nine to five, but it's like, what else can you do to bring yourself some money? You yeah. know, like, you I'm talking about like low wages because there's great nine to five jobs and that lifestyle for some way gets a bad rap online, but I think it's actually beneficial in some ways mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if you make like so for some people 50 could be a lot for some people that's not enough some people 100 is not enough but in my personal opinion if you make 60 and up and you have nine to five you got some element of freedom because right. you got you know when you got to go to work you got your weekends off you could put in your vacations yeah where a lot of people think that starting their own business starting their own venture is going to give them freedom but in the reality it it's doesn't not, it's, just, it's, it's not it's like 80 hours a week instead of 40 yes right. exactly like, you're going to work harder yeah, yeah. And it's going to require yeah. a lot more it's going to require a lot more money in the beginning for a lot of businesses they're going to be making less money exactly you know but through the process of businesses that this, i learned this in business mastery which is a tony mm -hmm. robbins seminar and it's phenomenal it's expensive but worthwhile um, but they were talking about how to become an owner versus an operator. You know, a lot of people, when they start their business, they're an operator, working the 80 hours, but then eventually they could step into the shoes of being the owner, where it kind of runs runs itself in a way, but they're still there, present. And then that's when people step into the role of being moguls, you know. Right. These moguls that manage multiple businesses on multiple different industries, and they can do it successfully, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah ultimately man it's up to you it's up to you, to your lifestyle and what you prefer like yeah either way is cool man like if you if i agree everybody's not a worker everybody's not a boss you yep. know so you got to know yourself and you yeah. got to choose your lane y'all know who everyone gary has yeah. yeah oh yeah. man gary yeah i love, I love shout gary, out to v. gary v shout out to gary v Fuck and yeah. um shout out to the comedian tim dillon i don't know if y'all know dillon. tim dillon but he was on joe rogan's podcast and they were talking about gary v and it was kind of funny. He was like, all my loser friends think they're going to be CEOs of these companies. He's like, some people should just fall in line, you know. And Tim Dillon's right. It's funny. But, like, 
I don't, I don't want to make it seem like those people are lesser because like there's definitely sometimes in my own life I prefer and it's more valuable to take the passenger seat or to take the back seat. You right. Know, you don't always have to be you know the boss of everything, but I think it is important to be the boss of your own mind. You know, yeah, to be for the, sure. To be a, the boss of your own philosophies, and I don't think you should negotiate your your values and your philosophies because I think that those are something that's important. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yep. Values and philosophies. Yeah, it, a lot of people don't even know what those are for themselves. You know, like they yeah. haven't figured it out yet, and that's I feel like that's where a lot of a lot of people are our age struggle. You know, like anywhere from like 25 to 35 year olds, like a lot of people don't know what the fuck they're doing still, yeah. you know? And it's like, once you figure that out, once you know what you're good at, what you're not good at, that's the first thing you need to figure out. Like, what you know, you know what yeah. it is, you know what people are afraid of. I feel like people are just, they're afraid to lose and yeah. fail. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to, they don't want to fail, but that's the only way you learn, man. Exactly. It's all and error, bro. That's yeah. the only way you learn. That was one of the biggest takeaways from doing timeshare sales for yep. five years is just learning how to overcome rejection not just in a overcoming um objective to mm-hmm. objections to further progress to a sale but also overcoming rejection because if you work a day a week a month and you're in sales and you haven't making any money like you got to bring that baggage home and that and going home is like it in your mind you know being like oh my god like I'll, and sometimes we have negative self-talk so how right. can we reverse engineer that in a way to make it positive self-talk talk yeah, and it's by looking at rejection as not a means of defeat, but as a means of a stepping stone, as right. like a lesson to become better and to become stronger. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just, this isn't for me. But like, you can look at it like that. Or you could look at it like, what can what I do? did I do wrong exactly. to make them reject me? You know, or yeah. like, what, what yeah. can I say this next time? How can I approach it different? Yeah. You know, and you start, you start you know using your brain a little bit and it yeah. gets you somewhere yeah. yeah so a way of like being a value extractor so it's like every situation i walked in how can i extract value from the situation how can i learn something but there is some element when you're dealing with clients that reject you where it, there is time to move on you know oh yeah for sure like you one of the best words horse. yeah <laughs> correct like, yeah. one of the best words in sales is next right next <laughs> you know right move on next. move on next come on you know because yeah. the more people you see you know you know what yeah, i mean yeah. it's like your chances man. yeah and you're taking a mental space thinking about oh my god there's people that do nothing when you could be thinking about all right the how next can person. i tell the next person you know how or like you were mentioning how what can i learn from it what, what, right. what can i take away from it exactly well. so yeah. very true yeah interesting very mm-hmm. very interesting i had a good time doing that shit i'm telling you man it was awesome bro like yeah, it's it, a different experience yeah sure. it was really yeah, really different and and that's life. Sales is life at the end of the day. You know it really I mean? is. Like, maybe not exactly, but in a lot of ways. It yeah. Is, you know? It teaches you a lot, man. It teaches you how to communicate with people. It teaches you how to read people. You know, yeah. like, there's a lot of, like, there's people that you could tell, like, if you've been doing it for, you know, a while, you could tell in the first couple of seconds how it's going to go. You know, just by body language. Like, you learn, you learn different the things. Vibes. Subconsciously, you learn it. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like... The vibes, man. You apply it. Yeah, the vibes. The vibes, man. <laughs> yeah, the vibes. Yeah. yeah. You and, and there's some, there, I guess there's some cheat codes out there, and what they are is books. You know, mm. people that have been through it, and they've, like, passed it down, you know, all the decades of knowledge and experience. So, you know, I remember when I was growing up playing, you know, PlayStation 1 and all that, and Xbox One, and then I got three Xbox 360, and I got Red Ring every freaking day, you know. But I remember, yes. I don't know if y'all did this, but logging online and, like, looking up cheat codes, and then I would, like, write them down, like, yeah. like XX0 triangle square <laughs> up, up, right. But yeah, the reality is... That with, uh... Grand Theft Auto. With Grand Theft Auto, yeah. 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 I, if there was a game that offered cheat codes, I was using it. You yeah. know? But I think with life, I think that that is, is books you know, in some mm-hmm. ways. Cheat codes. You know, yeah. our, our cheat codes. And there it's a, a, a time saver. Man. Time yeah. saver. Like, why reinvent the wheel? You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Why, why take you know, a decade to learn something that someone already went through, where you can learn it by reading the book maybe two, three times to really ingrain it, and then take the next step, which is the most important step, incorporating the knowledge that you learn. Right, because there's a difference between knowledge and applied knowledge. If you don't apply what you learn, it's useless. Yeah, you're not doing nothing for yourself. So I think it's taking that step too, uh, which is important. Uh, apply yeah. what you learn. Yeah, for real, you have yeah. to apply what you learn, mm-hmm. man. If Very nothing, true. there's no, there was no point in learning it in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just wasted time. That's why you got to read Goggins. 
You're, yeah, you're reading it. Goggins. Yeah, Goggins. I love Goggins. You guys man. are David telling Goggins me about is this. A fucking badass. Yeah, bro. yeah. Like, I mean, I follow him on Instagram, and he's fucking phenomenal, man. Yeah. You know, you wake up in the morning and you see that post, and he's it's like, it gets. and it's like, man, yeah. he's straightforward. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he makes you feel like a bitch sometimes. Yeah, he's like, stop know? being like, a fucking puss. Like, come yeah. on, look at my feet, bro. You see my feet? <laughs> Like, man, like, his feet's fucking, yeah, have, yeah. like, he's a warrior, man. But he Stay goes hard. To, he goes to another level that yeah. most people are not willing to go to. Yep. And I'm also one of those people that's not willing to get to a certain level that he is at. Right. And, like, pushing injuries to the point where, you know, I, I don't know if you, y'all got to the part of the book where he ran 100 miles. The first time he did an ultra marathon, 100 yeah. miles around the lap, he showed up with, like, a, a Gatorade and, like, some Ritz crackers, crackers yeah. and, like, some protein powder or something like that. Crazy and he was also a body built like he was big at the time like 280 like deadlifting and everything like that so like when you're that big and you're running that much that's a lot of impact on your knees all that weight oh. so long story short he i think he said he broke every bone in his feet yeah. he was pissing coca-cola color yeah. urine mm. and, and shit, shit up his back but he's like i did it i did it in my mind so like for me i'm not willing to go to that level you know, yeah. but I'm willing to like get sore. I'm willing to like push myself <laughs> right. worse than uh, I'm willing to push myself more than I was before when I put out those those challenges. You know, make right. you feel uncomfortable. You know, it's good yeah. when you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, it's all good. it's all about knowing yourself. You got to know yourself and how, like you said, how far you're willing to go. You know, can I talk about that us. challenge? Yeah, for sure. That challenge because. I first heard of it on Joe Rogan's podcast when he had Jesse Itzler on. Jesse Itzler. Um, and he actually had Goggins live with him for a while. Mm. And for a whole month. Yeah, I saw that one. And he was talking about one day, he said, we're going to run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. And then Joe Rogan started laughing, cracking up. And I was like, I was mesmerized by it. I was like, that sounds freaking incredible, but also sounds like exciting. It sounds like a fun thing to like... <laughs> To, to dive into <laughs> now running that much is not fun <laughs> nah, but, but yeah. being able to like test yourself to see if you can do it that's fun yeah i've done other challenges that i wasn't able to succeed in which was i tried two miles every hour for 24 hours Fuck. i got to the 12th hour where i got 24 miles in and i just couldn't do it anymore you know mm. every step i took would provide a shooting pain on my achilles so i got achilles tendonitis from it which hurt a lot mm. but from the 4 4 48 challenge which was four miles every four, uh, four miles every four hours for 48 hours i successfully did that one i did 53 miles in two days mm. and i'm Jesus. not so much of, of a runner goggins is the one that got me into running you know um in february which did help me get ready for this challenge i, I did five miles a day you know every single day and then i did this challenge the four four forty eight in april so a couple months later right when you get to that point of pushing yourself beyond what your body thinks is capable what your mind thinks is capable i realized that the only thing that was left and i could be wrong but this is just like me theorizing and philosophizing about the experience is your spirit mm. you know we all hear mind body spirit and i feel like when your mind's completely broken down your mind's like come on dude this don't make sense like why you why you keep doing this your your, your feet hurt your legs hurt and your body's like i freaking hurt every step you take is a shooting pain what's left is your heart and your spirit you know and that relentless pursuit to not give up you know and mm. it's it, it feels like those challenges help me communicate with that side of me better than without doing those challenges mm -hmm. so that's like a huge value that i got from that as well but that's awesome bro i hope i hope that people could you know watch this podcast and take you know take some a few things away and learn some things yeah but we appreciate everybody that's yeah, thank come you guys back for having us. me yeah thank matt yeah. for coming through we're gonna, yeah. put we're gonna your, have uh, some merch soon man we're gonna you know yeah get yeah. that get that merch that yeah, merch, yeah that we're gonna get that, that merch. Talk merch we're gonna sure. put yeah. your information here um your in instagram so guys YouTube. we appreciate yeah. it love you guys love you stay safe peace, peace. all right y'all peace out